Some years ago, I heard a homily about the reality of sin that can destroy our relationship with God. I also touched the topic of repentance. I encouraged my parishioners to do their best in trying to live in this state of grace. It is truly a fantastic feeling to be reconciled with God. Peace and the joy of the Holy Spirit surpasses any experiences this world can offer. Repentance and reconciliation are great not only for our spiritual life, but also they are good for our psychological health. After Mass, I was approached by one of my parishioners who told me that believers were called in the Bible saints. Therefore, there is no need of speaking about sin and repentance anymore. Well, the problem with this kind of thinking is that we were born with free will. Therefore, until our last conscience thought while on earth, there is a possibility for us to betray Jesus as Peter did, and many more great saints in the church's history. Fortunately for them, they were humble enough to repent and come back to the friendship with God. I have been living long enough to see individuals in different communities who appeared to be pious and spent a lot of time praying, but their deeds were evil. They lived in conflict with others and didn't want to forgive and make peace with their enemies. Because of their stubborn hearts, their relationship with God was not healthy either, no matter what they were saying about it. It is worrying that more and more people in our society say that they don't need the sacrament of reconciliation, therefore they don't like to hear about repentance and renewal. As soon as they hear the word sin from the pulpits of their churches, they switch off. Others will not come back choosing other communities where they will not have to face challenging moral issues. Unfortunately, if we don't understand that there is a possibility of being separated from the Lord through our own sinful actions and thoughts, we will never truly appreciate Jesus' suffering, death and resurrection. He came to heal all those who were unwell, not those who were convinced that they had no need of healing. He came to die for sinners. If there was no sin, his sacrificial death wasn't needed. We know from the Bible that most of the Jewish leaders refused to accept Jesus' message of repentance. In response, he told them that they would die in their sins. Brothers and sisters, in today's first reading, St. Paul talks to the people of Jerusalem. He is not afraid to remind them that they killed the Prince of Peace. God, however, raised him from the dead. He tries to justify their actions by saying that they didn't fully realize what they were doing. However, because they were disconnected from the Lord, he calls them to repent and turn to God, so that their sins may be forgiven. He invited them to accept a new kind of life the risen Lord was offering them. A very similar theme occurs in today's second reading. St. John writes in his first letter these words, I am writing, my children, to stop you sinning. Then he consoles his readers by saying that if anyone committed a sin, there is the Advocate before God the Father, Jesus Christ, who took away our sins through his suffering. Dear friends, Jesus died for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. What should be our response to such a heroic act? Christ wants us to have the same relationship with his Father as he has. Such a relationship is possible only because of his death and resurrection. 
Such a relationship is possible only when we live in His grace. We get to know other people through different kinds of interactions, words and feelings. Our knowledge of God comes from His love for us and leads us towards love. Saint John says, we can be sure that we know God only by keeping His commandments. The most important commandments Jesus told His disciples are these, love of God and love of neighbor. Saint John says, anyone who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. So, to know God is to obey his commandments. If we do that, we will see a beautiful fruit in life. God's love will come to perfection in us. Our hearts will be burning with love within us. We will be experiencing God's presence. We will be able to share it with those around us. Like the two disciples from today's gospel who explained to others what had happened to them on the road to Emmaus and how they recognized Jesus at the breaking of bread. When we share Jesus with others, he comes to that place. We read in St. John's Gospel today, they were still talking about all this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. He wants to bring that peace to all those who have humble hearts today as well. He does it through our ministry. We need to have courage to proclaim the risen Lord using different means available to us. When we speak about Jesus, he himself will open the minds of those who listen to us. We must be similar to the apostles and become witnesses of the Lord in the world. We need to obey his commands and to preach in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins to all the nations. Right at this moment, Jesus is repeating the words he spoke to his disciples 2,000 years ago. You are witnesses to this. Yes, you who are baptized and are watching this video on YouTube. Please, decide to be always willing to repent from any form of unfaithfulness to God. Allow Him to fill you with His peace and forgiveness. And then become the Lord's authentic witness where you meet others and wherever you spend your time, at the workplace or supermarket, at school or in the gym, but above all, in your own home. Bring to those places the same peace Jesus brought to the upper room when He appeared before the apostles. Find a new ways of saying, peace be with you. And bring the joy of the risen Lord to all those whom you meet every day.